Okay. We can load up this one here. Okay. So now we have our running again. And we're going to create some time series outputs here. We're going to create time series of catchment output dot that. And we're also going to save the elevation file. Okay. And the grain size file. Okay. Now it's already created them in previous versions, so I'm going to delete these files that we've already made. Okay. I'm just going to check that we haven't we've got our slope processes back where we were. Good. Okay, so we click on load data. Variables are okay. Click on start. And we're going to let the model run for a bit now, generate some data, and then we can look at it. So in the meantime, we can we can look at some other parameters here. While well, just while the model's model's running away. Okay. So if we go back to the numerical tab here, what do these values actually mean? Okay. Well, min Q for depth calc. That's actually the minimum discharge required before it generates a water depth and starts to um, look at erosion and deposition. Okay. And we're operating on a 50 meter grid on this DM. So it's quite important that we, we, we need quite a high value for this. Okay. Water depth threshold above which erosion can happen. So basically, if there is a value of, if, if it calculates a water depth greater than one centimetre, then it will start to do erosion and deposition here. There's no point having it any less, otherwise you just simply won't have any um, erosion. You know, you have so little water to make anything happen, really. Um, some parameters here, maximum road limits. This is an important parameter because it controls the amount of erosion and deposition that occurs with the model. It controls the speed of the model. Caesar operates with a variable model time step. Okay, so um, when it's when there's little water, you have a very long time step, as we can see here. The time step is I don't know, probably an hour, two hours or so. Okay, whereas when we have a flood, you have more erosion and deposition, and the model will reduce the time step. Okay. And this time step is adjusted according to the maximum amount that could be eroded and deposited between cells. Okay. And here we have a parameter for the initial number of scans. Uh, what Caesar does is it actually does some quite nifty, um, quite nifty work to look at uh, to, to optimize the model. Okay. So here we here we can see the um, that's very clear. Here we can see the the erosion and deposition that's. Here we can see erosion deposition that's been going on within, within the model. And you can see it's all concentrated around the, the stream network. So what CESAR does is, um, before, before it actually starts doing any erosion deposition, it, it runs a sort of set discharge over the whole catchment, and it works out where there is going to be water, which is in this case only on where the stream network is. It then creates a buffer of a few cells around the edge of this area, okay? And then it only concentrates on this area, the area within the buffer, the area around the cells where there's water, where there's erosion and deposition. So it ignores for most of the time all these bits on the hill slope here where there's generally not a lot happening. What it will do is it will check these every sort of every modeled day, or in some case every modeled month, to check for landslides, to check for soil creep, that type of thing. Okay. But in the meantime, most of the time it spends its time looking just at this area here. That's why every now and then down this area here will say determining scan area. What it's doing is as you get floods, the area that it looks at will expand because the drainage network expands and they will also contract. This actually increases the speed of the model's operation quite a lot because it means it, will, it can only, um, it only needs to concentrate on, on the cells that, that have water in them. And in the case of a catchment here, that's probably only about 5% of the cells it needs to look at on an iteration by iteration basis, then check the others at other times. Okay. So we're going to have a look at some of this data now. And we can see here that we have um, erosion deposition. We've been running for 70 days. And we've also, we're hoping to save the elevation data and the green size data. So I'm going to click pause here. If we click, click, quit and save, it's actually going to save these data. We can see here we've got a file called elev.txt, a file called grain.txt, and here we have our catchment output.dat file, okay, which contains a load of numbers. Now if we look at the data, and I'm going to open this with, uh, with Notepad, okay, 
we can see that this is simply a time series going up to 70, 70 days, we can see there, of what has been running into the model. Now we can see we have the time in one, in this case it's days, then we have the discharge that's coming out in the second column, which you can see comes up here, then we have three, four columns, ignore those, and the fifth column contains the total amount of sediment that's come out, okay? And then the next columns contain the amount of sediment coming out in different grain sizes. So this is the finest grain size, the next grain size, the next grain size, then the next grain size, and the next grain size, etc. Okay. Now we close that down, and what we can do is we can open up Excel. Okay. And we can then actually open up this this file and have a look inside it. Uh, if I can find out where it is, I think it's within. Just one second, see the tutorial, quick start. We have to look for non-Excel files, so all files. And we can look at catchment output.dat. Okay, we'll have to do some filtering here. Delineate by space, finish. Okay, now we have the same data in Excel spreadsheet. So we can put up what our hydrograph looks like. Okay. There it is, nothing coming out for a while, and then we start to get some flow coming out there. Okay, we can also plot up because remember the fifth column, column E, has the amount of sediment coming out. Okay, so we can plot up column E back against column E. Okay, and we can see that actually looks quite similar. So here we, we actually got the, the water following the sediment quite similarly. And we can relate the two. We can do it like a very simple sediment discharge relationship if you like. We can we can relate um, water of the x-axis here and discharge to the amount of sediment coming out. And you can already see we're starting to get some scatter coming in there. Okay, so I'm going to shut that down. No. Now we can also look at some of the other files. So this is the um, data file that came out for the elevation. And it's actually been saved in an ASCII format, which we can read. Um, in with ArcGIS. Okay, so we can spend a second and if I can find it here, load up ArcGIS. Where are we? Our map. And this will take a second to load up, as it always does. But what we've tried to do here is, is make all the um, is make all the seed files able to be created and opened within ArcGIS. So if we look at the bedrock or the DM files that, that, that Caesar reads, if we look at these, they are in again the, the ASCII format that is outputted from ArcGIS. Here's the typical file, number of columns, number of rows, the coordinates, the cell size, and the no data values. Okay. ArcGIS as per usual is taking a long time to load up. Ah, here we are. Okay, so we can input the data using the to raster tool, ASCII to raster. Okay, and we can go and look for our ASCII file that we've just made there, which is in desktop, Caesar tutorial, uh, quick start, and here we are, LF. You can use other GIS packages instead of ArcGIS if you like. I think many of them will, will save in this sort of typical raster format, so it's, uh, it's no problem to do. OK, so it's loaded up here. We want to embed it to the float. Click OK. It's chugging away at it and adding it to the map. Yep, and there we go. We've got the end there. OK, so we can do this with other output files. When you run Caesar, as we show here quickly, you can see you have the options. You can save lots of different files. You can save the grain size, the velocity, the water depth, which is here. And if you run it in tracer mode, all the different layers. Okay. So that's a very simple guide of, of what you can do with Caesar very, very quickly. Um, if you want to add your own DM, it's quite important to get the DM process correctly, and that's in the Word document tutorial that's associated with the download files list. Thanks very much. Um.
Not finished.